Good afternoon folks, welcome back to nearly the end of organic chemistry actually. We're going to deal with amino acids and proteins. Uh, this is SQA 70-72 to 72 and Scholar 151-164. It's actually quite involved all this, uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll have a look at the chemical reactions in this video and I'll have a look at the biological applications in the next video. So, what's the story with amino acids and proteins? Let's look at the chemistry behind these. Basically, amino acids are monomers. So that implies a small molecule which link together in order to make these guys here, which implies that these are polymers. So how about that? Your skin, which is mainly made, which is basically all protein, is a polymer. Um, we're going to have a look at the structure of amino acids and how they join to make polymers and also perhaps how you can unjoin them. Uh, let's have a look at that. So, uh, so, typical amino acid structure. Let me draw one for you. This was actually easier when uh, this... W we used to have a section of the course called amines. They took this out when it was dumbed down a few years ago. And amines had a carbon atom joined to a nitrogen atom with a couple of hydrogens on there. Come back, advanced higher, we'll have a look at amines in more detail. Um, but this is an amine molecule, which sounds like it should be part of this. It does indeed, and this suggests something else. So basically, an amino acid is a small molecule which has got at one end the amino group, which is this NH2, and we'll just keep a couple of hydrogens on here, keep it nice and super simple. And at the other end has an acid group. Now, you could take a wild stab at that, of course, and figure out what that is. It is a carboxylic acid. So that is the simplest amino acid that we can get. Next door to it, we shall conjure up another amino acid. We'll make this one slightly more complex. This is what the SQA loves to do for problem solving in this section. Um, and what we'll have in the centre is something weird attached to this carbon instead of something normal. So double bond o OH, sorry, that's a double bond. I apologise for my terrible drawing. Um, and as I said, we'll put something weird on here just to try and wrong foot you, like SH group. Uh, and down here we'll have something even weirder, we'll have some sort of weird hexagonal fried egg thing. This is a molecule called benzene which crops up all over the place in nature. And um, don't basically you can pay no attention to this, but the parts in the middle are actually irrelevant. We're just going to copy them directly over and not worry about them. They are not involved in the chemistry. I'm wondering if you were to perhaps pause the video and have a look at how we could join these two molecules together. Because, is this looking familiar? Carboxylic acid joining with a hydrogen? Oh yeah, when this was an alcohol, we made esters. We are going to do pretty much exactly the same type of reaction here. And we're going to produce this molecule here. So these two are going to run off hand in hand to the sunset. We will be left with this. Oops, sorry, it's supposed to be an H. And then that is bonded to a nitrogen. The nitrogen's got a hydrogen on it. I know that wasn't there in the ester. That's because the valency of oxygen in the ester was just two. And the valency of nitrogen is three. So we need this extra hydrogen in here. Sorry, that's the world's worst hexagon. I apologize. Let's see if I can get my double bond right this time. So... Uh, in green over here, by the way, just for comparison, we'll have what this would look like if it was an ester. It's very similar. It is very similar. Um, but it's not the same. And that was an ester link. And today, we've got this, which has got two names, uh, depending on you're a biologist or a chemist. This is called the amide link for chemists and the peptide link for biologists. That's how you recognise proteins, guys. I'm also hoping that you could tell me the name of the reaction used to produce uh, this molecule here from the separate amino acids, and also the name of the reaction that would burst it apart. We're taking two smaller molecules, joining them together to make a bigger one by removing... Oops, I forgot my water. Ha! Do. So that is a condensation reaction come across that before. And if we go the other way around, we take a big molecule, burst that apart by adding water, then this is a hydrolysis molecule. That's a hydrolysis molecule. Hydrolysis reaction, sorry. 
So condensation reaction that way, hydrolysis reaction that way, guys. What I've got here is a typical question from the SQA involving um, proteins. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit so we can see the question there. Come on, phone, you're going to zoom in? No? Ah, no, yeah, zoom in too much now. There we go. Perfect. So that's the molecule there. And it gives you the horrendous name here. I'm not even going to go into that. If you're interested, it's called palmitoyl pentapeptide 4. So that's this. It's using skin creams. Circular peptide link in the above structure. That's the, that's what you call a gift of a mark. Now, what they're doing there is they're trying to lead you in to the hydrolysis of this. We're going to try and rip this molecule apart uh, and see what you actually make. And the, the repeating link to look for is the amide link or peptide link, same thing. So every time you see one of these little chunks there, that can be broken apart. And you can start to separate it out into the individual molecules which will make which were linked together to make this up. Let's go with different colours on this one. So let's our that's our second peptide link. Let's break that there. So that's our second molecule. There's another peptide link. Let's break that there. Now, bear in mind, guys, this is your exam paper. You can do whatever you like on it, so feel free to doodle on it like this if it just makes life easier for you to see what's going on. Now, I was about to break this one, but if you have a look at the structure, it's exactly the same as that. So, that's a duplicate of that one. And if you have a look at this one, that's a duplicate of my blue one. Right. Um, what's the actual question asking? So, circle peptide link. I, by the way, my that that's not a peptide link. I didn't actually answer the question. Ha! <laughs> I didn't do what the question asked. You're supposed to circle a peptide link. That's a peptide link. Um, and then it goes on to say, um, palmitoyl pentapeptide four is formed from palmitic acid and three different amino acids. And down here, this is a problem-solving question, by the way, for one mark. Uh, it's a nice example, by the way, of why an exam technique, you might want to balance your time. I mean, look, so look at this. If you start to read on this and you're thinking, what's going on here? It's worth a single mark. Whereas this, that was also worth a single mark, took you all of five seconds to do. So it's entirely an exam technique thing here, guys. You might want to be happier. Um, do the simple stuff first and then work on the complex problem solvings later on. It's entirely your call. Personally, it's the way I did things. Um, so the question goes on to say, this is made from palmitic acid and three different amino acids. Uh, this, by the way, this will be palmitic acid. It tells you that earlier on the question. That's how I know that. So there's one molecule of palmitic acid, two molecules of whatever that is, amino acid is, threonine, there's one molecule of serine, and there's two molecules of lysine. Go to make up this whole shebang here. Now, draw a structural formula for the amino acid serine is actually, how on earth are you supposed to know that? Well, the clue here, of course, is if this is the palmitic acid, there's two molecules of threonine, there's two molecules of lysine, there's only one molecule of serine, there's two greens, there's two blues, so... One of these is threonine, and the other one is lysine, but it doesn't matter because they're asking about the single one, serine, which means it's got to be that. So if we have a look at the details here, we have got an N and an H. We've got the C here. We've got connected to CH2 and then OH and then just H at the bottom. And then here's the carboxyl end of our amino acid. Great. Are we finished? No, because this has a valency of 3, so we have to reconstruct the amino end of it, which had lost an H, in order to make it into the protein molecule. So we have hydrolyzed this and split it into all its individual little amino acids, and that gets you a mark. I think we're done on this, folks. This is just the chemistry end of it. We'll come back in the next video to the biological part of
of amino acids and proteins and how they work in living things. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.